Now this is RV Vagabond Jerry in South Bend, Indiana and the five Studebaker brothers started their business in the mid 1800s making horse-drawn carriages, buggies and various related equipment and then in the early 1900s they got into the automobile business started a few years with electric vehicles and then they marketed gas-powered vehicles up into the 1960s and it all started right here in South Bend, Indiana and that's why they have Studebaker Museum right here in the same place if you read about it and Wikipedia you'll find it's a very very interesting company and a long time progression of I think about 110, 120 years that they were in business. So let me show you around the Studebaker Museum. This is the very first Studebaker vehicle, a Conestoga wagon, but it wasn't marketed. It was built for their own personal use, like this explains. completely open for cargo oh and here is horse-drawn hearse 1863 how do you like this motto that's what I do <laughs> and this is interesting too very small buggy Here's another one. Now we're moving way ahead to 1950. I wonder if this opens. Nope, you have to get in from that side where there's not a door. <laughs> and you can get into the back as well. Interesting how that opens up diagonally. It's not completely restored. There's a hole there and knobs missing and the gear shifter. <laughs> Maybe it's because this is the one car they allow people to get in. Now we go back to 1910. And this one, not sure about that one, but this one is a station wagon. Can carry a lot of people up there. Horse drawn. Here's a picture of a factory lineup of buggies. And look at this. They actually made a sleigh. 1905 <laughs> Studebaker sleigh. A farm wagon for $130. Here's several more horse-drawn buggies. And here is a horseless carriage. <laughs> Let's see what this is. 1910 EMF, which Studebaker bought out in 1911. Here's an interesting wagon with side-by-side -side seating and one seat facing to the rear. This explains that. And by the way, for the first few years, Studebaker automobiles were only electric vehicles like that one. And this is the oldest surviving gasoline-powered Studebaker. $1,600. That looks in really, really good condition. 
This is a Studebaker Flanders model from 1912. Now this is an odd model with Studebaker's connection to China as it says here and CCG as the initials of the original owner they put on there for him and this is a 1927 Erskine model and now we're getting into some much larger cars this one has a rumble seat and that is this and over here is a 1933 model of the same thing also in 32 they made a four-door model of the same vehicle and the see the rear door there 32 was a big year for Studebaker they also made this model and then here we have a 1925 big six duplex Phaeton, they called it. And this is a 1916 SF4 Roadster. Only $885. Now this is a considerably different roof style on here. This is a 1913 Studebaker. And this white one is a 1922 and that is a hearse for a child it looks like it could hold an adult well maybe not look at this 1919 model driven across country <laughs> 475,000 miles and still going strong. How about that? Let me give you a peek inside. They carried two extra tires and I bet they used them. Here's another transcontinental model. However, this one made a speed record. How about that for back then? <laughs> That was the speed record. Uh, how about that? And here's one not restored. This says what it is. And this red one is 1913 Turing sedan. And guess what this is on the running board? That is a headlight gas tank. <laughs> sure glad we don't need those anymore. Studebaker made horse-drawn carriages up until 1920. This shows the history of the company and the Great Depression did not go well for them. Here's some advertisement posters that they had. Now I'm up on the second floor they have a bunch more cars and three trucks. Studebaker trucks from 37, 47, and 49. My father bought a used Studebaker in the mid 60s that looked very much like this that we used as a family car for a while. Here's a 57 that they called the Golden Hawk model and the Studebaker Lark became one of the most popular cars 
this one from 63 here's a 61 truck here's a 63 Studebaker Avanti 411 horsepower Wow oh and here's a little racer let's see what this is somebody just put the Studebaker engine into a midget and I'm guessing this is a 63 model <laughs> might look better if they fixed the flat tire didn't know they had front opening hoods like that here's a 56 model of what they called the president V8 1950 Starlight Coupe here's a 52 model two-door and these Avantis were very sporty looking cars kind of might remind you of a Mustang or a Corvette to give them some competition and Studebaker also came out with something that I found extremely rare I've been to numerous car museums and I rarely, almost never actually, see a woody wagon in a museum. This is a real woody wagon, which I learned about when my grandfather had one. How about that? I think I remember reading somewhere that they came out with woody wagons for a while when there were steel shortages. Although they could have put a lot more wood on here. This is a 1956 Packard. And at some point, the Packard company merged with Studebaker and became the Studebaker Packard Automobile Company. Now this is the basement of the museum where they have two rows. <laughs> I have a lot more Studebaker cars. I'm just going to quickly go through these. There are just too many to name. Boy, they got some beautiful paint jobs. Oh, and what is this? <laughs> that is a different kind of truck. Some special purpose must be. Oh, and this one too. A flatbed truck. You might remember the Muppet movie where they were driving a Studebaker. That's the front end. And here in the back end, a person was driving <laughs> the vehicle with the steering and controls in the trunk is how they did that this tells about it sorry to disappoint you but the Muppets were not actually driving the car see if you can guess what kind of Studebaker this is <laughs> how about that 63 zip van they called it well folks I think I've seen just about everything in the Studebaker Museum if you have any kind of a feeling at all for Studebakers <laughs> then you might want to come here and see what they've got they have even have a Studebaker fire truck isn't that neat <laughs> Good day, folks.